Jay, it's so great to have you on the show. And Stefan, it's an honor and a pleasure anytime I get to collaborate with someone as uh, uh, unique and bright as yourself. So I feel privileged. Oh, well, thank you. And um, I would just love to know, first of all, as a way to set the stage for this uh, potentially amazing interview, which I'm, I'm sure it will be, what would make this the very best interview you've ever had? I'm curious. Uh, the, 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 probably the best thing you could do is plumb more of my uh, ideology and worldview as opposed to business and, uh, and ask me questions that would help whatever the profile of your of your viewer listener to really re re reflect and think differently about the rest of their life, their career, their relationships, and see if I could be really a meaningful catalyst for that as opposed to just doing shtick on what I normally do. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because there's so many interviews out there about your different books and uh, about preeminence, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you get tired of reiterating the same stuff over and over and over again over the years. And there's just so much more depth uh, to you. I than only that. get, yeah, I get tired when people don't do anything with it. Uh, and I think there's a, a, a larger and larger segment of humanity today, we were talking earlier about uh, social media, et cetera, that go through the process of uh, what I'll call veneer experiencing, but it's not really deeply, meaningfully impactful to them. And uh, a huge portion of the dynamics going on in their day and their life and their interactions are, uh, they're not even diffused. They're, uh, they're almost worthless, and that I think that's a big tragedy. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, I think, a dumbing down of America and actually globally that's happening because of social media and how Facebook and, and the like have all employed casino engineers who figure out how to get us even more addicted, who have done things like make the carpets busier and the ceilings busier and removed all the clocks from the casinos and uh, pumped in oxygen and all these things to optimize the amount of money they're able to extract out of the casino goers, but now applying all of that uh, uh, evil genius <laughs> to keeping us addicted to our phones and constantly checking. And there are, it's typical for people to check uh, several hundred times a day their phone. And when you I know it's pathetic, isn't it? it Think it, about it. Think about being so dependent, enabled, and and uh, addicted to the the quasi urgency of seeing, you know, who uh, you know who liked me, who you know who texted me, who uh, befriended me, or wants me to. It's a very I mean, not sexually, but it's a very it's a very morally perverse environment, in my opinion, because it really is a disruptive one where you can't possibly be meaningfully focused on much of anything. If every three minutes you're rechecking the ding, that's right, or or the vibration of your phone if you're trying to kind of keep yes. it quiet. It's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, and uh, I think it's it's uh, going to uh, pose a, a real um, hazard to our health, to uh, the, the 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 future of our of human of the human race, really, because we're so addicted, we're asleep at the wheel essentially, and uh, making poor choices about who. Uh, gets elected and how uh, the world will be run and uh, what's important and the long-term game of protecting the environment and uh, addressing uh, climate change and all that just kind of goes out the window because we're looking at the next 
cute cat video or whatever. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, uh, it, you know, there's a, a very good friend of mine that was retained by a client just to, to confirm a client's viewpoint. And he was paid $750,000 to assess the state of emerging leadership in our country. And the conclusion is there's a massive leadership crisis because the younger people are not focused on um, being preeminent. They're not focused on collaboration. They're not focused on growing and developing other people. And this is a generalization, not everybody. They're not good communicators. They don't real they they don't want by and large, and there's exemptions and there's exceptions, to work past a certain time. They are more into their personal experiences. Uh, they don't really have a contextual appreciation for the impact on the client, the recipient. And it's a generalization, but the, uh, the implications that that uh, portends are so horrific right now with uh, Damon John, myself, and another person to teach corporations how to hire, uh, 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 what's the word I want to really use, how to, how to properly hire, uh, uh, motivate, mine, manage, grow, develop, uh, whether it's millennials or X's or Y's or Z's, because they require a different kind of, of a psychological uh, um, management is not the right word because that sounds puppeteerish. A uh, collaborative uh, sense of esprit de corps and purpose-driven uh, 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 guidance. We're also working on how to sell to those people because it's a whole different market. Their criteria is different. Their interests different. Their judgmental criteria is different. I, I laugh, and I'm just on a a, a, you know, a nonlinear roll. One of my very dear friends is a very prominent uh, cosmetic surgeon in Beverly Hills, and he happens to be arguably one of the three top people in the world in um, in surgeries and and um, uh, treatments above the neck. And he is masterful at doing noses, and he is called upon frequently to redo bad nose jobs. And he tells me that younger people call him, and their biggest criteria is, well, I can get it for $1,000 cheaper from someone else. It's not, how many hundreds of thousands of successful surgeries have you done? How many tens of thousands of redos have been brought to you, how can I be assured that the most critical uh, distinction in my facial, uh, uh, I guess, uh, what would I call it, my facial uh, presentation will be preserved and enhanced. They just want to, they're, they're judging it on a criteria that is so outrageously insulting uh, to their own best interest that I find it appalling yeah yeah so it's not just a question of how to sell to these people who are short-sighted and uh, addicted to their phones and all that but what to sell to them because the courses that you've created that tr trove of amazing knowledge and wisdom that you have built over the decades is way too much for the average uh, short attention span consumer these days. They, they want the sound bites, and that's uh, sad and uh, a shame, but it's also a, a reality. So if, if, if we have, let's say, a 20-hour long course for them to take an online training, we got to figure out a way to dumb it down to an hour or less. Well, even an hour might be too much. Uh, so, you know, what do you, 
what do you <clears throat> suggest to our listeners as far as not just how to sell to these uh, folks, but what to sell to them? Well, uh, I'm going to advocate something that is uh, diametrically and blatantly different. <clears throat> I, I would say that if you really want to own uh, the mind share forever, you have to be willing to stand apart from everybody else. There's no shame in using a soundbite, pardon me, as an entry level, what I'll call an initiator. But I think sooner or later, whatever you sell, you have to be able to gain the trust and the respect to the point where you really, uh, you really educate and illuminate your market to the fact that the best decisions they will make can only be made if they're well informed and it's impossible to be well informed with a bunch of superficial sound bites and uh, five point reviews that you don't really delve into that if you don't learn due diligence if you don't learn depth of understanding if you don't learn uh, the massive spectrum of perspectives that impact any decision, any uh, action, activity, then you can do okay, but you'll never be great. And I believe that there's a certain category of people that want to operate at a much greater level in every aspect of their life, but they don't know how. Mm. Yeah. That's my opinion. That's not what you maybe want to hear. But it's my opinion. Yeah. So what do you think it takes to be great? Uh, I've done a lot of work on it. And if you want to hear the short soliloquy, I'll be happy to share it. Yeah, I'd love it. Okay. Well, I believe that every human being is innately programmed in their DNA to want greatness in every aspect of their life. I don't think anyone purposely wants to be a mediocre and you can fill in the blank employee, entrepreneur, manager, leader, uh, lover, husband, wife, uh, father, friend, uh, 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 contributor to the betterment of society. And yet one or two percent ever achieve that in any of those aspects. And when you ask why, in my opinion, there's a couple of very simple reasons. First of all, nobody really has an understanding of what greatness is supposed to look like, feel like, execute like, and be received like in any of these elements of your life. If you don't know what it's supposed to be, there's very, very difficult, a difficult time and a very low probability you can achieve it. So the first is you have to get a context of all these different areas of your life and what greatness would look like. And the only way you can do it is to model and example other people and try to identify what it is about them, conduct, attitude, uh, uh, motives, communication, attention, priorities. And then, because there are all these factors in your life that are not singular, they all are integrally uh, impactful of one another, you've got to figure out which one or ones are the biggest uh, detriments. It might be that even though you want to be a great leader or a great uh, team member, you're so screwed up in your personal life that you have to fix that first to make everything else flow. So once you get a context of, first of all, what it is supposed to look like, feel like, uh, and be received like to be validated, not manipulated or superficial, then you have to isolate which area of your life needs to be worked on first. Then you have to figure out where you are vis-a-vis -vis where you ultimately would like to be and are capable of being. Now that's the first step. Step two is when you get those uh, which most people never get even close to that. The second step is figuring out the safest, easiest paths to make progress in those different areas, not to pole vault, 
Too many people want to go from mediocrity to greatness in one fell swoop. And they think that a course or a book or a a consult or magic pixie dust is going to do it for them. And it's improbable. You have to have a process. And my uh, recommendation is don't try to be a, don't try to scale, uh, 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 the tallest mountain in the world on your first on your first try find one of the walk-up paths to maybe 8,000 feet and do it methodically and slowly first and make progress because progress if you study uh, you know XYZ all these different grad- gradients of, of uh, age groups what they want more than anything is to be part of something that's growing that's exciting, that isn't stagnant. And part of it has to be self-imposed. You have to basically in, invoke yourself into uh, experiences that you create for yourself that are exciting and where you're growing so you feel fulfillment. Now, so first of all, you got to figure out what it's supposed to look like, uh, uh, express like, what shifts you have to make internally, how you... Uh, come across how you validate it then you go back and you isolate the most critical area first second third then you figure out where you are vis-a-vis where you want to be and then you realize you can't possibly achieve totality of improvement in any one fell swoop it's a process like the adage about eating an elephant then this is where it gets really tricky anybody here who has either uh parented a child or had any experience with anybody who has young children knows that when a young child starts learning how to walk, talk, eat, poop, ride a bike, uh, they're terrible. They fall, they go, and you, and the only way they continue. And the only reason I'm able to communicate clearly to you and you're able to communicate clearly to me and I can stand up and I can walk around and if I have to use the restroom, I can use it appropriately is because a parent acted as a champion and 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 a believer in me continuously until I became competent, proficient. And we need people in our lives to do that for us. We we it's I mean it's admirable but it's very difficult to try to do it yourself. It's as if I wanted to repair my car and I bought a, and I'm so techno and mechanically phobic, it's unbelievable. But when you have a champion, an advocate who picks you up, puts you back on the path long enough until it becomes natural and momentum and velocity take over, uh, that's pretty much it. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So uh, this is something that you've uh, applied in your life. And uh, what would be a, uh, a, an example of you know, how, how this is uh, manifested for you? Well, there's a bunch of examples. Earlier in my life, any time I was exposed to anybody that I was impressed with for any reason, I would isolate after the interaction, what it was that impressed me. Attention, communication, sense of acknowledgement, uh, listening. And I would make it a point to try to uh, uh, analyze and uh, understand the anatomy of what just transacted and uh, slowly see if I could incorporate uh, elements of that in my own uh, in my own conduct. Then as I got, I'm sorry, I'm on an airfield where we got a beautiful office, but you'll hear planes and helicopters all the time. Secondly, is as I got more, uh, let's say negotiable in the market, I was able to make associations with the broadest spectrum of diverse people representing a whole myriad of different skill sets, expertises, worldviews, and I would have dialogue with them regularly where we would talk about life and I would listen 
And I encourage them to be constructively critical of me because I know I'm not perfect and I'm far from perfect now. Far from perfect as a human being, as a friend, as a father, husband, all those things. I'm better than I was. But I think uh, in life you constantly grow or you die. And I am a firm, firm believer in a derivative of the quote uh, from Socrates, a life that isn't, a life unexamined is a life not worth living. And I've done most of my work in the entrepreneurial business community. So a business that isn't constantly examined and reexamined isn't worth owning. But a life that isn't constantly reexamined to make sure that you are following what is really your true north, not society's definition of true north, I think is very important. Mm, yep. So true. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And um, so you're seen as a, one of the marketing greats. And, um, you know, I think that's uh, 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 that, that doesn't even do justice for what you've done in the world, like the billions of dollars in value that you've created for your clients and so forth just only scratches the surface of your legacy. Um, I, I'm curious if we were to map your life out to uh, the uh, model that Alison Armstrong has put together, which I'm, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with. I, do you know? No, I'm going to try to get rid of something on the screen, which I hope won't disconnect us. Okay. Okay. You see, do you see the picture that's up? I don't see any picture up. Oh, okay. Well, if you don't see it, I'm not going to worry about it. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry about the background. So I'm not familiar with them. Tell me, what what are they? Please explain. Sorry, one second. Let's wait for that to stop ringing. That's an interesting ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there it goes. Sounds like a babbling brook. <laughs> so Alison Armstrong is uh, an expert on... Uh, on men and on women and, and the stages that uh, both sexes go through as they age and as they mature. So if you think about um, a man and where he starts out, it's like a page is a, is a child, a boy who is just kind of learning the ropes and doesn't really uh, know what he's doing, but he's modeling after uh, older boys, teenagers, and so forth, young men, uh, who are known as knights in this model uh, that Allison developed. And there are okay. different types of knights. Actually, Tony Robbins teaches uh, Allison's uh, work when uh, he's uh, talking about men and women and polarity and, and stuff like that during Date with Destiny and so forth. So the go, you go from okay. knight to prince, and you have early prince, middle prince, and late prince. And then after that, there's the tunnel, which is in um, kind of uh, general terminology known as midlife crisis. And then after the tunnel, you become a king. Now, some men go even beyond king, a small, small percentage, according to Allison, maybe it's 2%, go on to emperor. Like They're not happy to just have their little slice of the world, their little kingdom. They, they want a, a large empire. Um, and then the, the, some men, and again, a very small percentage, will shift to kind of a wise man or sage sort of uh, role where it's, it's about legacy and giving back and making a difference and, and, and being the wise man much more than it is about uh, maintaining the kingdom and passing that on to the children and doing, um, you know, uh, uh, right by, uh, his family and his, uh, his coworkers, colleagues, uh, the people that he sees as, uh, as, um, uh, you know, the people he cares for. So I'm curious, uh, based on that model, um, do you see yourself as a king, as an emperor, as a wise man? Or what, what do you think? Interesting. I, I'll tell you what I have tried to do. And, and um, 
without sounding morose, I'm uh, in age wise, I'm in the latter part of the runway of my life. And I'm not saying that negative or positive. It's just a clinical statement. And I believe my purpose is to make everybody better off that I interact with because I'm in their life. And I think that Helping them in business is certainly important, but business success alone doesn't give you the joy, the fulfillment that you want. Consequently, wait one second. Come on, Brian. Uh, Just one second. It said disful, and then this came up. Hmm. And I don't want to get rid of it, but I don't want to look at myself. Just one second. I'm sorry. Just, just, yeah, great. Okay, good. Now I see you. Uh, But I believe my role, my purpose is transcendent to really business. Although I use business as the medicine, uh, you know, the sugar that makes the medicine go down. I think that, uh, I'm far more valuable in helping people expand their worldview, learn to appreciate the, the dignity of other human beings, uh, realize the joy of playing full out, uh, realizing the fulfillment that comes from being externally focused, uh, uh, ex- ex- what's the word I would use, uh, uh, ex- experience and exhilarate in discovering all that is around you that is outside your comfort zone, uh, a lot of things like that, frankly, because to me that I think is what has enabled me to have the rather unique perspective that I have. And and again, I've channeled the dissemination through a business, uh, 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 not screen but or, or filter, but uh, lens. But I think deep down it's what I just said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very cool. So um, I'm, I'm curious, who, who were your mentors uh, when you were growing up? There were so many, and people ask that. The first one was an employer named Brian Auer who taught me nonlinear thinking, value creation, uh, the possibilities of achieving all kinds of economic uh, uh, performance without having to pay anything except on the result, uh, the value of breaking one thing into many things, redeployment. Uh, I went on and I learned uh, an enormous amount about uh, uh, marketing from a person named Dan Rosenthal, who introduced me to some of the great minds uh, that existed in the 20s, 30s, and 40s when you had to really understand the workings of the brain. I then, as I evolved, I was very privileged because I've helped three, 400 of the top experts. And in order to help them, none of them came to me for assistance with their methodology. They came to get their methodology revered more, valued higher, uh, uh, differentiated. But I had to learn short course primers on each one. And I had everybody from Stephen Covey, Stephen M. Covey, Tony, uh, the Deming organization, the number one company in the world in multivariable testing, uh, Sally Hogshead, uh, uh, Damon, Dave Asprey, uh, uh, the top guy in Six Sigma in the world, uh, the world's number one uh, uh, strategic litigation consulting company and an enormity in between. And I listened and I reflected and I learned. So with without isolating one person, I would say I am a unique blend of an enormity of influences who I was privileged to, to be attracted to to an attractive, to more high quality, preeminent 
thinkers, doers, icons in the industry as opposed to lower level, uh, avaricious type, uh, uh, short sighted people. So I was very blessed in the beginning and I worked for people who understood either gaps in market or uh, how to add more value to the market or were very much advocate or champions of uh, entrepreneurs. I worked for Entrepreneur Magazine in the very beginning when no one even knew what the meaning of entrepreneur was. We had to send out uh, our mailing pieces with the Webster's Dictionary, not just phonetic pronunciation, but the definition. So I've gone through, I mean, I've been around 40 years and I'm not saying that to uh, calcify myself, but the exp- and I've traveled the world, not exactly the total world, but 80 or 90 times. I've gone to China, you know, 15 years, Malaysia, Asia. Tony Robbins and I every year do a full day together of collaborative mastermind problem solving for his higher level platinum people. Uh, so, you know, I've got clients around the world, very few of which are in the information business. They're diverse and impressive, and most of them are either uh, rapidly achieving leadership or they're niche leaders. Uh, I don't know if that helps or if that's babble. <laughs> no, that's good. And so let's take one of those names that you mentioned, uh, Damon, Damon John. Um, okay. I would love to hear like if you could channel him right now, because <laughs> he's, he's said publicly that you were a huge inspiration and mentor uh, to him that helped him get to where he's at today as a billionaire. Um, what, if you were to channel him right now, what would he say um, was the most touching, vulnerable moment or um, uh, nugget that, uh, that Jay shared with Damon? Well, the first thing is that I was very candid with him about uh, the Andy Warhol uh, philosophy that we all have our 15 minutes of fame. And I explained to him that uh, I have been very blessed to have a resurgence, but truthfully, I was explosively prominent in a certain era, and then it became very bland, and I flattened out. And I think I've been rediscovered to my delight because I haven't done a lot of promotion. But I explained to him that that his job was to keep relevant forever and to be an advisor or uh, or a contributor to markets, not just in one static uh, way through Shark Tank, but to keep growing and developing as markets changed. Uh, to his very great uh, credit, he is one of the most authentic and genuine and humble people I think I've ever met. When I met him, uh, I was vividly impacted by his candor and his humility and his uh, and his self-effacing. But I think he'd say that I basically have talked a lot to him about more life issues than business issues. And I've tried to uh, instill as much preeminence as I could. And I have uh, been, you know, I think you can be very successful, but you need champions who, who uh, not bring you down to reality, but who, who make you aware that you are real, that it's not a surreal, uh, uh, veneer existence and you're playing a key role in impacting and inspiring all kinds of people. Uh, and, and I don't know, it's just, I think that it's, we have very, we don't talk as much anymore because his prominence has gotten so, uh, remarkable and deserved, but he's just a remarkable human being with depths of, uh, of authenticity who cares very deeply and tries to contribute 
very richly to uh, segments of uh, of the world. And I think he's just, I mean, I am impacted. Not, I mean, I, I've been very blessed. There's a lot of, I don't name drop very much, but I get exposed to a lot of prominent people. I'm not impressed with prominence. I'm impre- impressed with authenticity. I'm impressed with uh, purpose. I'm impressed with external focus. Uh, someone who makes you feel important, not you feel that they're important. And I think that's a great gift. He possesses that. And I think he has uh, more and more been able to uh, nourish and uh, and grow that and apply it in many different forms. But I mean, I don't know what he would say. I mean, he's mm-hmm. been very gracious in publicly acknowledging me. And I must tell you, that is a rarity. I mean, I'm very pleased and honored and humbled and grateful. I have uh, observed a lot of people in life that other people have made a profound impact on, and they don't do a very good job of acknowledging that. And I think it's a disservice to themselves, not to their mentor or the influence, because they tend to get arrogant and ignorant and believe that they alone did something when in fact very few of us can do anything by ourselves yeah yeah very true um have you read uh, damon john's book uh i have read both of them and i actually uh in the first one i was uh featured in a half a chapter which i was very uh delighted with and i was acknowledged in the back and i actually helped uh, format some of the points. I read the second one and thought it was really good, and uh, I gave some perspective. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I don't believe I'm referred to in it. But yeah, I think his books are very. Are, are, I think his books are very, very powerful in their understated. Uh, message. I think that they are designed to help you see that you're not alone and that there have been many people who experienced a plight or uh, 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 a, uh, a life at a certain level that is not dissimilar to yours, but they decided to do something different with it. And the first is to make the decision. The second is to take the action. The third is to believe in the outcome, and the fourth is to not uh, abandon or abdicate the first time you you uh, you embrace turbulence. Right, and uh, what would you say are the most um, impactful books that have changed your life over the years? Well, for me, it's a little different. I was impacted outrageously by uh, a collection of old books that were written in the 20s, 30s, 40s, and they were about marketing, but they really were about the human mind and the condition and what human beings uh, respond to. And uh, uh, their books... uh, I'll tell you the names. One's called My Life in in Advertising. One's called Scientific Advertising. One's called Taken at the Flood. One's called uh, 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 How to Write a Great Advertisement. One's, uh, two of them were David Ogilvy, which I loved, uh, books. Uh, I have, you know, I am not as avid a reader today as I would like to be, and the only compensating uh, uh, benefit is I interact with so many clients who read so much that I'm able to, at least through osmosis, distill a bit of what they learn. But there's a lot of wonderful stuff out there. I am troubled by uh, a tendency that I see, Stefan, that both Online marketeers and books tend to focus a lot on tactics as opposed to the big uh, overall strategic uh, mindset. 
And I think tactics are very important, but they are uh, they are highly subordinate to the major uh, the life game we're playing, whether it's business, career, uh, relationships. And I don't think enough people think about that. I know I didn't early in my career, and I regret it tremendously. I sort of bounced through it as it uh, you know as it happened without really being proactive and i think that's really a, a tragedy yeah do you know what uh T- sun tzu said about tactics in the art of war please he said that tactics without strategy is the noise before defeat i love that that's a great quote and yeah i've liked uh the sun tzu book uh this is interesting and i'm not advocating this for religious purposes because my background is Jewish, but I've been very impacted when I go to China of some of the Buddhist beliefs. I like that because they have a very interesting, non-judgmental uh, uh, regard and respect for everything and everyone living. Mm. And it's a really interesting, uh, it's just sort of a, of a, of a, what I call it, a, uh, uh, a life strategy, and I like that. I'm not saying anyone or everyone should be a Buddhist, but I think that I think that the biggest benefit I've gotten out of my life is the ability to explore and examine all kinds of things that are outside the normality of whatever I do or whoever I am. And I think that's what really precipitates geometric growth in a human being. I, I'm big into uh, spiritual exploration myself, and I, I really like uh, Buddhism as well. I, I, the book, The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama, had a profound impact on me when I read it um, around 2010, 2009. Um, but I've also been studying Kabbalah uh, over the last few years, and uh, it's been such... Uh, and my daughter does that, and she, she's gotten a lot out of it. Yeah, it's been amazing, amazing. I've had three episodes on Kabbalah so far on this show, um, which I'll include links to in the show notes. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, what, uh, what sort of spiritual message would you want to share with our listeners now? Like, if you could encapsulate some of the biggest spiritual lessons that you've learned, whether it's through Buddhism or Judaism or... Um, anything really what, what would you tell okay. our listeners yeah well let me start by saying that I don't think anyone has the ability to achieve perfection hmm. I think that's a fallacy but I do think everyone has the ability to be better every day and to work on themselves every day I think the perp I mean I have observed a lot of religious people who with total respect for the religion are hypocrites. Uh, In the Jewish religion, they call them three-day Jews. They'll go to the high holy days and they'll be a president of their congregation. Then they'll really rip people off and be ruthless in business and it's incongruent. I think that if there is a heaven and a hell, you will go up depending not upon your devoutness to your religion, although that's certainly meaningful, but because of your conduct continuously to your fellow man. And I you interact with anybody for any reason, for any amount of time, make them better off because you were in their life. I think that there are people who either sap oxygen out of the world or they put whatever chlorophyll back in uh uh, i think that uh uh, one of my good friends robert hargrove has a philosophy you're either a multiplier or a diminisher you make people greater you make situations better you make uh uh your the environment you're operating in richer happier or you make it worse and there's little in between. And I think it's very important uh, continuously to evaluate yourself because I think staying on path is hard. 
I've been very proud of myself many times in my life, and I've been very disappointed with myself at times in my life. And uh, I have to really get back on the wagon. And I try very hard, but I'm an imperfect being, and I think everybody is. But I think slowing down and doing some deep reflective thinking at key intervals about who you are, what your beliefs are, where you're going, not just in your career or business, but in all aspects of your life. What you've done to make others better off, whether you are self-consumed or externally focused, whether, uh, you know, whether uh, you are really involved in the process or you're basically an observer up in the stands uh, uh, it's a big difference between sitting up in the stands watching the game of life eating hot dogs, dripping mustard and, eat, and drinking beer or being you know, uh, either at least on the on the uh, uh, sitting you know, uh, with the team on the bench ready to go in or on the field and I think we all uh, sometimes are afraid to be on the field playing the game and and when we play the game, we take it for granted. And I think there's nothing in our lives that should ever be taken for granted. We should be grateful, we should be reflective, and we should be always willing to adjust, improve, and um, and uh, deeply examine and evaluate ourselves and our relationships with others. I think also that it's terribly important in our interrelationships with one another to uh, commit yourself to try to uh, explore, examine, appreciate, understand, and acknowledge how other people see life, even if you don't agree, because that's their reality. And until you appreciate my reality, you can't be uh, in, um, in sync with me. And if you are antagonistic to my reality, then we'll never have a chance of connecting. And maybe that's good, maybe. But I don't think everybody wants to be uh, uh, a bad person. I don't think everyone wants to be repugnant. I don't think everyone wants to be arrogant or con condescending or egotistical. I think a lot of people really don't see themselves for who, what they are, not just uh, in conduct, but in perception to others. Mm, yeah. So it's like you uh, need to climb this wall of context, separating you and the other person and get into their world after you've gotten over the, the wall. So you can see what they see out of their eyes, what the world is like. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. I mean, the world is representative of a multitude of different realities. And if you delude yourself to believe that your reality is the only one, then you've limited your ability to connect with 95% of humanity. Mm. Yeah. So business, uh, I see it as a spiritual game. And I'm curious if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that you agree with that, but I would love to hear. I, I've never thought about it like that, but I think it's far transcendent of mere money making or mastery of marketing or advertising or promotion. Uh, I think it has to do with a lot of, uh, of holistic factors. And I think that uh, those people who play it for purpose and who play it for contributing to others win a lot more in their life than uh, those that don't. Anyhow. Nice. Okay. And um, a, a concept I learned from Kabbalah is that intention is, uh, I don't know about everything, but it's, it's a lot of the, the equation. So if you are nice to a homeless person, but your intention was just to look good, uh, that takes away all the blessings, whereas if your intention was to actually 
to you know, uh, share light or, or spread light, then that's going to uh, yield the blessings. So in business, if you apply those concepts of in intention and um, how important that is, um, what would be an example in, in your mind of a, uh, a positive intention and a negative intention with the same exact um, situation, outwardly uh, speaking, like let's say you know you're donating sure. to a charity yeah, or whatever. I'm yeah, you, you share an example if you could. Did you ever watch the uh, TV show Billions? I have not. I've heard it's good though. Okay, well that, yeah, well uh, he was facing a really bad uh, public embarrassment for having traded a lot of of stocks right in the middle of the World Trade Center problem and a man came to him who was a who, who was uh, an expert in foundations and his suggestion was he donate a billion dollars right now to a special foundation to placate and to show remorse but it was a, a superficial theatrical tactical move just to win the market it had no authenticity behind it and uh, uh i think that it I mean let's talk about intention intention flows from purpose purpose flows from uh values values flow from uh, belief systems. If your belief system is it's all about me, then there is no intention that you can possibly have that has integrity to it. Based on my definition of integrity, however, that other person has a different one or they would not be doing it. If your values and your ideology is all about making the world better, making people better, adding value, contributing, being authentic, not ever uh, being manipulative, and that every time you engage in people with people for any reason, you're trying to make sure that they got value and they felt listened to. That's great. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know if that helps or if that's a, a, a bad example. It's good. Um, it's, uh, I, I honestly, I don't watch much TV, so I, I'm not familiar with billions or. It's good. Or really you don't waste time. time. Yeah, I do feel it's a, a waste of time to sit in front of the the boob tube. Um, speaking of uh, sitting in front of the tube, what do you do as far as like self care? I don't know. You know, if you're doing a lot of. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, meditation or what, uh, a lot of people kind of self-medicate by sitting in front of Netflix all the time, but, um, you're, you're a special class person and, and I, uh, I know you, you do some pretty extraordinary things like you get, uh, like four hour massages and things like that. So I'd, I'd love to hear a bit about your self-care regimen. Okay. Well, uh, it's probably contradictory. My my job is uh, untangling Gordian knots, and people do not come to me normally with easy uh, issues, problems, challenges, or uh, opportunities. They're normally complex as hell, and uh, they're extremely stimulating, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty wiped out because I'll do sometimes six, eight, 10 totally different uh, businesses in totally different industries. So uh, usually when I'm home, and I just got back from a month in Europe and Asia, so uh, I'm a little bit fatigued, but normally every week I will get three 90-minute uh, to two-hour treatments of acupuncture. I will get... Uh, uh, I will get uh, three massages. I have different kinds. I get uh, I get uh, 
special injections that are flown in from Switzerland that are growth factors and they're expensive. I have done uh, stem cells. I have a, a relationship with the preeminent Chinese energy coach of North America who works with uh, Tony and Dave and uh, he works on me. When I'm home, very honestly, I try not to, I like uh, wine, I try not to drink very much because as I've gotten older, my uh, system can't handle it. But I do like to uh, escape, so I will watch interesting Netflix issues. I try, this is gonna sound morose, I try to read the obituaries but I don't read the uh, the really prominent iconic ones. I'm more interested in just a human being who lived a meaningful life and and it was just marginalized by a few paragraphs or a few sentences because I know that everybody in their own situation did wonderful things and I want to appreciate humanity. I used to be very much into exercise and I've stopped being as vigilant, which I need to re recoup, but I've, uh, I've, I've managed to abuse my body pretty bad, and I need to work on some alternative ones because I used to do very intense ones, and I uh, have suffered the consequences. I speak regularly with a broad spectrum of diverse people, just trying to learn what they're doing and what's interesting to them. I spend a lot of time just doing reflective thinking and it's free form. It's not always uh, uh, con it's not always topic driven. It's just what I'm trying to do more of because uh, as I've gotten older, I'm almost what would I say? I get uh, somewhat entranced when I'm working with a client and I don't remember much of anything. And I try to slow down at the end of the day or in between and remember what happened because most of the time, thank goodness, uh, my advice, my perspectives are very powerful, but I don't remember any of them. And I try to slow down and remember what happened, what I learned, what I did, what they shared. And uh, let's see, uh, what else? I, I'm not as big in nutrition as I should be, but I don't eat usually fried foods. I don't eat sweets unless I'm drinking too much red wine and then I have a, an obsession for chocolate. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I try to spend time appreciating just what's happening at any moment, because I think everything is going so fast that we're not aware of much of anything. And I think that's a tragedy because it's just too much wonderment that we just dispense with and too much inconsequentiality that we take serious. Yeah, yeah. so you mentioned Dave, and I'm, I'm guessing you're referring to Dave Asprey. Um, Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, so Dave Asprey, who's been a guest on the show, it was a great episode. I'll include a link in the show notes uh, to that. Um, he, he's got such a, an amazing regimen of, uh, of, of biohacks. Oh, he's disciplined. Yeah. He is disciplined. Um, oh, I, I, I take a, a bunch of supplements that I've learned about from Dave and some that he his company produces, like I had Unfair Advantage, an ampule of that Um uh, about six hours ago, I've, uh, uh, I had some brain octane this morning, uh, which is another one of his products, the uh, 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 bulletproof uh, uh, products. And I'm curious uh, what sort of changes you've made because of uh, your friendship with Dave. Well, I like unfair advantage. I have a difficulty myself. Uh, with the butter and it just, but I drink his coffee. Uh, uh, we have, he's very gracious to me and I get, uh, deliveries every month of all his goodies. Uh, 
and uh, but but mostly it's it's the coffee and and that not that it's it's that all his his uh, his products and and uh, supplements aren't great they are I just am not as disciplined as as most and uh, but I would recommend to almost anybody that they really uh, study him and I've known a, a, a number of clients that went on his bulletproof diet and lost 30 40 pounds and gained enormous clarity and energy and re uh, you know rebirthing invigoration I think he's a remarkable person who's done exceptionally wonderful things to really help people elevate their capacity to just you know experience the wonderment of life by first of all making their brain function at a much higher level and um uh, i just i'm not as diligent as i i could be but it's only because i'm you know i uh <laughs> no excuse but my wife is she uses everything that he's got and she's operating at a very elevated level mentally intellectually perceptivity wise and and uh and I think that when you operate at that level, you're you're experiencing a whole different reality than the majority of people because you're sorry, you're you're at a much more stratospheric awareness, perception, and understanding of all that's going on. So I encourage everyone. Yeah, yeah, and and so you had stem cell therapy. Uh, did you go to Dave's yep. uh, stem cell doc to Dr. Harry Adelson? Yes, I did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so did yep. Ryan, my wife. Yeah. And, and did you get a good outcome? Yeah, well, you know, I didn't have any serious um, aches or pains or anything to uh, address. I did it more for uh, longevity and... and Pro prophylactic, prophylactic. Yeah, more of a insurance policy, you know, because I wanted to get my stem cells banked. You know, and for, I did the same. Yeah. And I, and I did the same. And I have... Uh, I have a couple of injuries that are very uh, profound and they're so ruinous that uh, it's very difficult for stem cells to help them. But uh, the value I've gotten out of it just in prolonged healthfulness, vitality, mental acuity is unquestionable. Yeah. You know, I mean, you may or may not believe in it. I'm a great believe. I'm a great, I'm a non disbeliever and by that I mean uh, I do a lot of things and many people think I'm uh, bizarrely crazy and what I do and the level I have to play and the fees I charge I need to be uh, uh, operating at, uh, at at an exquisite level of everything and I don't much care if things are profoundly viable or perceptively viable, all I care about is that I operate at a high level. So I do a lot of things and I couldn't isolate which one might be the most important or not. But I think if you do nothing for yourself, that's a tragedy because uh, our bodies are made to be high performance machines they're made it doesn't mean do what i did because when i was younger i did all these upper bodies and i ruined my joints it means it means use uh use prudence but it means literally your body is made to grow and expand to i don't mean get fat i mean figuratively and literally but it can't do it on its own it needs help and there a lot of these methodologies that are um I mean, Dave's is all new biohacking. A lot of the things that I do are are 500 years, or I mean, 5,000 years old. But they were used, you know, when they didn't have all these things. They were used by mostly the elite who had to be very masterful at seeing, uh, the you know, the tapestry of their of of their uh, domain and making multiple decisions and staying uh, in power and not getting 
uh, killed and everything else. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that we don't appreciate that stimulate the mind. The mind is a very, and the body, the body, you know, if you look at energy, which I'm very involved in, the body, uh, I mean, it, I have a belief that there's all these people in history that are thought of as forces of nature. And what in fact is more true is these are really remarkable people who mastered the art and science of using to their optimal advantage forces in nature. And that they're available to all of us. We may not be a Gandhi or a Mother Teresa or a Tony Robbins, but we all have the capability of being so much more than we are in so many aspects of our life, physical, mental, relational, emotional. Uh, and, and I think we uh, deserve ourselves so often by not availing ourselves of all that is out there. I'm I'm curious. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, there is a great episode with Dr. Harry Adelson, our stem cell doc, uh, our shared Good. stem cell doc between you, me, and and Dave uh, on this show. Okay, so I'll great. A link in in the show notes for that. Um, have That's you, fabulous. Have you ever experienced uh, Donnie Epstein's uh, entrainment? Yes, I have. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? They're uh, they're truly impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's amazing, and all, yeah, also, it's really uh, impressive. Also, a guest on the show, um, and definitely worth listening to. Um, for yeah, me, there, I, there's I, there's a remarkable. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that there was an. Uh, I had an incredible experience uh, through an, an entrainment with Donnie, where um, I blessed all these people and prayed for them, and then one of these people who I hadn't thought of for a decade and a half contacted me out of the blue and somebody who we did not um part ways in, in good terms and he called to apologize four days after the entrainment that was pretty pretty yeah wild. no you have to you have to see i think non-believers are rigid thinkers i think there are certain things which are absolutely uh inauthentic but i think there are other things uh that are you know very authentic i i i i have a uh just a, a exercise a lot of times i will own a car so long that the battery in the in the uh uh in the key starts getting weak and if you want to do a weird experiment and it's late at night and you're trying to get into your car from a distance and it's a little of an onerous environment and the, your key's not working, you can put it right next to your head and it will work because there's all that energy and all that electricity in your head. And we don't realize that our bodies are, uh, without you know dispensing with the religious segment of it, we're basically like, uh, you know, like walking, talking, breathing, uh, storage batteries because we you know we're water, we're you know we're electricity. We have all these receptors in our body, and we use so few of them. You know we use the ones for vitamin D, but we have energy receptors. We have uh, we have uh, uh, what I would call uh, not psychic, but we have. Uh, knowledge receptors that are able to really gain insight from others if you really, and I'm not being metaphysical or hokey pokey or airy fairy. It's just there's so much and most people do so little. Yeah. And it's so sad. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> yeah, what so else I, do you want to talk in about? The, in the willing suspension of disbelief, which I think you That's good. I love the way you said that. Awesome. So um, I want to be respectful of your time, and um, you know we could keep going for a few more minutes if you'd like. But if uh, you need to wrap, that's cool. If too. if you don't mind, I have, yeah, I have an appointment. But I I think to your credit, and I would ask as soon as you're done with this, send it to me, and I'll put it on, 
I mean, really, send me the file. I'll put it up before you even do it because you ask questions of me that I don't think I've ever answered. I don't know that my answers are profoundly great, but I can promise you, you ask really interesting questions that I've never been asked before. Oh, well, thank you. And I will happily send you the files, of course. And um, and I'll put it up with a link to your, to your uh, with an encouraging link, because I think the world of you and I think your purpose and your motives are uh, ele- uh, are at a, uh, enormously high in tension and elevation. But I, I adore you. But if you don't mind, I have to probably stop. No problem. Well, thank you so, so much, Jay, for sharing your wisdom and your experience and your insights and your just, uh, uh, yeah, your beautiful soul with our listeners. And if you, us- you're, you're more than welcome. And, and thanks for what you do, because you do two podcasts. This is my uh, uncompensated uh Uh, endorsement of you you're not making money from them but you try to enrich people on duality one is in your sphere of expertise and this one is just in the in the human condition so that's why i said you send me the file right away and it'll be up this weekend if i can do it and i'll tell everyone about both of them because i admire people who are trying to make the world better off because they're in it thank you thank you well have a great rest of your day and thank you listeners for uh, your rapt attention and your open-hearted listening to uh, this wonderful message from Jay and uh, have a blessed day. This is your host Stefan Spencer signing off.